I have to survive 100 days on a floating island in the middle of the void. Can I do it and beat the Ender Dragon? This is 100 days of Minecraft Skyblock. Before we begin, only a small percentage of people that will watch my videos are actually subscribed. So if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. It's free, takes like two seconds, and it really helps out the channel. Enjoy the video. Day one began, new world, new adventures. I stared into the sun for some reason. I guess I wanted to burn my retinas before I began or something. I looked around at the neighboring islands and began planning where I would want to go first. Undecided, I started to chop down the tree. Then I built a little platform to try and save some of the saplings because I wanted to be able to replant some for later. As I waited for the saplings to fall, I decided to start breaking the dirt. Apparently not my greatest idea since I somehow ended up in the nether. Then I did the only logical thing and started chopping down the nether tree. I also found a book in the chest and it told me to head north. Looking north, I saw a portal, so I quickly made myself a basalt generator, which took a few tries. But when I did get it, I used the basalt to bridge to the portal. I had to do a few runs of bridging to avoid a gas killing me, and in one of my runs, I noticed a magma cube. He seemed like a nice fellow, so I named him Magmi the Magma Cube. I guess he didn't like his name since he tried murdering me, so I killed him in return. RIP Magmi. Day 2 was more of the same thing. Just some bridging and more mobs in the way now, which was slightly terrifying. Some more bridging, and I made it to the portal. I found a chest, and it had a single fire charge in it, so I used that to light up the portal. I grabbed my items and headed straight for the overworld. I spawned pretty far away from the original island so I started bridging to it and then I quickly realized that I didn't have enough blocks. So I headed back and got some more basalt. And when I went back through the portal, I saw some gas, so I just decided to run away and call it a day. Day 3, I got some more blocks and bridged to the island. Once I actually made it to the island, I ran into a very major issue. The leaves didn't drop a single sapling, meaning I had zero wood aside from what I've already mined. From there, I mined all the dirt and created a small cobble generator. I mined the cobble and made myself a small staircase to the portal. I went back to the nether and started bridging to the nether fortress since I literally had no idea what to do. And from there, I decided it would be pretty funny to punch a zombie piglin. And apparently, they didn't find it so funny. I finally made it to the nether fortress where I found nothing useful so I headed back home. Then I moved on to solving the wood issue and my solution was to bridge to the jungle island. It took a while especially when skeletons kept shooting at me but I would get there soon. Also I realized another issue which was food and the only real solution I had was just to kill myself. Day 5 I made it to the jungle island where I quickly built a giant platform to save all the saplings in case they fell. After that I harvested the wood and got myself enough saplings to make another tree. And now that I had solved the wood problem I had to get started on solving the food problem. Day 6 rolled around and I first started by making an infinite water source. I bone mailed the water and somehow that worked. I made a small platform then put the water in there. I then expanded that platform and started placing some dirt on top of it. From there I used whatever cobble I had to relocate the spawner and hold all the dirt and place my first ever seed. And then called it a day. The next day was a boring one, just some work around the base, like slightly extending the platform, setting up the world's smallest storage system, and prettying up the staircase. Day began when I saw a wandering trader abusing his llamas, so I killed him and his llamas. I also still had a food problem and the way I was going to solve it was by making a moss spawner. So for days 8 and 9 I mined some cobblestone and chopped some trees. Day 10 I began the mob farm. Now as a beginner to skyblock the only logical thing for me to do was to search up a good farm design. But me being me I just winged it. Yes it took me like 3 tries but it's all good. I also realized that 2 days of material gathering apparently wasn't enough so I headed to get some more. That day I got set up with a water system to push all the mobs and the system broke like 2 minutes later and almost got me killed but it worked nevertheless. Day 11 was more of the mob farm building. I built the walls out of jungle wool to pretty it up, but I saw a giant square, so really, how can I make it look good? I finished the walls and slapped on a roof with a small hole to test it out. The farm worked surprisingly well with a hole, so I just AFK throughout day 12. The farm was a bit slow during the daytime, so on day 13, I finished off the roof. I also killed a few more mobs and bone mealed the wheat for some food, and to finish off the day, I used whatever string I had to get myself a bed and have a good night's sleep. Day 14, I woke up and realized that I did not have a single piece of grass, so I made it my mission that day to bridge to a nearby savanna to get myself some grass. From there, I collected some more jungle wood, killed a whole bunch of witches to get a single piece of redstone, and that piece would go to a piston for the passive mob farm. Day 15, I slapped around the savanna island so that I could break the tree and collect the saplings. I also ended up ditching the idea of the piston, which was a great waste of time, but it's all good. So I spent the rest of the day building the farm on the savanna island so that I could get myself some passive mobs. I also placed some of the fences to make sure they didn't escape once they spawned. I woke up hunger on day 16 so I made myself some furnaces to cook. This allowed me to smelt some logs to get some charcoal to make some torches. I used all the torches to light up the passive mob farm that still had no animals. And so after lighting up, I sat there and waited for something to spawn. I also died to an enderman but we don't talk about that. Day 17 rolled around and I woke up feeling like I had just been killed by an enderman. I got my items and headed back to the farm. And there she was, in all her glory, Shelly the sheep. 
I attached her to a lead and brought her back home. I knew my destiny was to build her the biggest castle in all the lands. So I started gathering some materials. Day 18 was the start of the magnificent castle. I made the nether portal the center of the platform that I was building and cut out some of the corners of that giant platform. I also grabbed some wood to build the walls of the castle. The next day I built the walls of the castle in sections. It was looking pretty good and due to my lack of glass I used some fence which still looked pretty nice. Soon after I met a spider friend and killed him because I hate spiders. I also changed the diagonals of the walls later on to cobble because wood looked really ugly. And towards the end of the day I started the top layer which to be honest looked meh. Day 20 I demolished the top layer and replaced it with something a little bit better looking. From there I was satisfied with the top layer so I just continued building it. Day 21 I had finished all the walls and began placing some of the spikes on top and a second floor on top. I also broke my chests and started moving them to the castle. Day 22 started off great, the sun was shining, so I headed into the nether. Apparently all the moths that ever exist decided to have their own vidcon meet at my portal. Yeah. I headed back in and continued my missions of slabbing the nether. Day 23 after slabbing up I had a very intense battle with the blaze. It did end very quickly though. I went back and had a less epic battle to get some blaze rods. I used those rods to make myself a brewing stand and from there I bridged to the swamp. I forgot to click record on day 24 but I did get an oak sapling and then headed back home. I then started my farm on the side of the castle. I worked on this farm throughout day 25 as well. The farm was looking beautiful so I started planting sub crops on the inside and even bone milled some of them. Day 27 I started by building a small pigman farm near my portal which was a pain to build. It worked pretty well but the piglins took forever to respawn. I still AFK'd for a little but it was slightly annoying. The following day I fixed the issue by making a platform opposite to it which I would walk on after killing the pigmen. From there I was able to fully AFK and get myself some gold. After AFKing I made myself a nether wart farm. This would be used to brew potions for later. Then I headed to the tree farm to get myself some oak saplings and was pretty successful. I also got myself an apple so I quickly made a golden apple and almost ate it. Day 30 I let my crops go and bridged my way to the mushroom island. I got myself some brown mushrooms and headed back home. At home I placed a sugar cane and waited for it to grow. From here I built a platform right outside the castle in hopes of a zombie villager. Yeah, it didn't really work. The following day I tried another strategy where I let the mob spawner mobs free. It was working great for getting discs. And although discs were great, it didn't really work. But I was still determined to find myself a zombie villager. Day 32 I got myself a zombie villager on the wrong side of the mob trap. It wasn't too bad except for the fact that zombie villagers burn in sunlight. I sort of gave up at that point and just brewed some weakness potions. For the next days, I had a small strategy change. I would build a platform and keep them trapped, then separate out the zombie villagers. While I was doing this, I got a new friend, Larry the Chicken. Larry was like my son, and was best friends with Shelly. After I kindled that relationship, I tried out my new strategy, and it worked. Except the zombie villager was a nitwit, so I had to kill him. From there, I got myself a butcher, which I cured, and then moved into the breeder. I also got Billy the Butcher a friend, and put them both in the breeder. On day 37, I got to feeding the villagers so that they could breed, and as I awaited little Timmy, I began work on the trader so that I could get myself some emeralds. When I woke up the next morning I grabbed a metric ton of carrots and saw that little Timmy was jumping on the bed. Day 39 I set up the biggest money making scheme in the world. I got some trapdoors, string, and tripwire hooks and duplicated the tripwires. While this may seem insignificant, this was my secret to becoming the richest man to ever live. Day 40 was a bright beautiful morning until I looked around. Larry the chicken was missing. I was so excited about the money making that I had forgot to protect my Larry. In a hurry I grabbed Shelly and took her back to the castle. I made fences all around and made sure that she was absolutely safe. Shelly couldn't have the same fate as Larry. Day 41 was a sad one. In commemoration of the late and great Larry I built him a statue. It was the last place he had lived and had a golden beak representing his golden heart. Rest in peace Larry. Oh and also, I traded for some emeralds. The next day I capitalized on the fletching tables and made like 50 of them. And I basically traded until dusk. Then from here on out I fed the villagers and traded until day 50. On day 50 I got myself armor and began trading my way up to a full set of diamond armor. And so I did. I then quickly took it back to my castle and hid it because no way was it going to have the same fate as Larry. Following that day I started to move the villagers to my castle. And to say the least, I want to die. The villagers were practically impossible to move but in the end I got it done. I also started to grab the materials for an iron farm that I wanted to build. Day 52 was more of the same. I set up the world's least efficient iron farm and moved the three amigos inside. They, they seemed pretty happy. It took a whole day for the iron golem to spawn but it was pretty cool that the farm actually worked. So I was quite proud of it. I couldn't afford hoppers so I had to sit there and cherry pick the iron to make some hoppers which was slightly annoying. I also started to bridge to the spruce island which almost got me killed. Day 54 I got to the island and made myself some spruce planks. In my opinion, spruce is the best wood, and honestly, this shouldn't even be an opinion. I then used whatever spruce saplings I got to make myself a big spruce tree that 
kind of looked like a Christmas tree. Day 55 was the start of the giant tower for Shelly. This tower would go right on top of the castle and I had some high hopes for this castle tower hybrid. It required some building skill and I had little to none, but I think it turned out pretty okay. Oh, and it looks a little weird since the dimensions are that of another portal, which does make it look a little weird. After completing the main structure of the tower, I started adding some detail into it and it was shaping up pretty nicely. I also thought it would be cool to add a flag on top, so I got to work on the flagpole and then I did the coolest MLG water bucket. I then spent the next two days on the mall farm trying to get as much string as possible to make the flag, and when I did, I made the flag of peace that represented Shelly's love for her kingdom. I also filled in some of the tower because I couldn't just leave it empty. And on the 66th day, I bridged to the sand so I could get myself some cactus. I had to be very, very careful so that I wouldn't lose a single piece of sand. Kill me. The next day I bridged to something a little less valuable which was the Dark Oak Island, and once I got there I saw a pillager outpost and did the only logically safe thing. I headed straight for it. Yeah. Day 68 I went back and activated dream mode because I absolutely destroyed these pillagers. Ow. 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 The next day my interest was peaked, so I explored and to nobody's surprise I found another monument to explore, the mansion. I wasn't all prepared so I decided to fix the breeder and feed the villagers so that I could get myself a weaponsmith. While this was all happening I had some time to kill, so I decided to build a ring around my castle to make it more of a fantasy build. It was a struggle to build I'll admit, but the idea was cool enough for me to go through it. And overall, I liked it, and so it stayed. Day 71 I added little thrusters to the circle to make it look like something was levitating it, and this addition made it look like 50 times cooler. From there I needed to get working on getting some tools and weapons. I headed to the trader and started trading for a few days. After grabbing some tools I bridged my way to the mansion and it took forever but around night time I reached my destination. Day 76 I put on my armor, grabbed my tools, and headed to the mansion. And then from there, I broke in. Yeah, so that didn't end so well. Day 79, I grabbed some potatoes and some blocks and went on a mission to get any items that were still in there. I managed to lose most of the items, but I did manage to save the totem of undying. I thought about going back in, but realized it really wasn't worth it. So I cut my losses and headed on home. And when I got home, I saw both my villagers had somehow become zombies. To say the least, it wasn't that great of a day. The next day I started by disassembling the iron farm. It wasn't working too well and I needed a new villager breeder. From there I extended the platform and tried making it into a breeder. And then from there I grabbed a whole lot of carrots to feed the villagers. Day 81 was spent trying to get silk touched and I managed to get it done. I also got myself a better food source from the farmer which were some golden carrots. The breeder was working well and so I let it run while I was enchanting my shovel with some silk touch. And with that shovel I grabbed myself grass from a nearby island and prettied up the castle with that grass. Day 82 and 83 were spent building the villagers a brand new home. The idea was to go for something simple but adds to the overall castle build. So I just built a box with a nice looking roof on top. And to be honest, for its simplicity, I really liked it. Also it's somehow made for a better iron farm than the original iron farm. Day 84 I built a ladder all the way down to the void, I would use this space to finally make a good passive mob farm because the old ones were absolutely horrendous. Day 85 a sheep spawned, but not at the passive mob farm. I named him Sean, like, like the sheep, and I spent the rest of the day waiting for the grass to grow. Day 86 I checked the passive mob farm and I saw some mobs had spawned, chickens, sheep, and cows. Or, or technically one cow. I went back up and grabbed some wood, and with that wood I would extend the platforms for these ungrateful animals. Yeah, I just called animals in a virtual game ungrateful. Uh, I, I think I may need some therapy. Day 87 I spotted a spider on my circle of freedom, so I went up and basically spent the entire day spawn proofing it, after killing the spider of course. I also bred the chickens and the sheep, well, some of the sheep, and then sheared them to make myself a twin sized bed. 
M many of them. Day 80, I got myself a cleric so that I could trade the flesh of the zombies. A bit weird, I'll admit, but I did it nevertheless. I also did some other trading in hopes of getting some ender pearls. And day 89 was a very exciting day. That That's a lie, I just bridged for like 10 minutes. But I got to the Crimson Forest and collected some Crimson Vines. But like like I said, very exciting. Day 90, I used the vines that I just got to vine down to the void. When I got to the bottom, I made myself a platform to stand on because swinging off the vines wasn't very comforting. Day 91 was the beginning of my money-making scheme, also known as a gold farm. The most difficult part of this was counting. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not the greatest at math. Day 92, I started building the roof of the farm because I really didn't want this to be a gas farm. And from there, I went back and I destroyed the old farm. I also killed the piglin with the golden pants. That, that was pretty sad. The next day, I somehow managed to place the turtle egg through the crowd of piglins. I'm not gonna lie, I was terrified I was gonna slap a piglin on accident, but thankfully I didn't. And the farm was looking great. Day 94, I let the piglins go and replaced all the slabs with some hoppers. This made my life like 20 times easier and I enjoyed killing the piglins. After a day of AF King, I got myself enough gold to do some piglin bartering. I'm not exactly sure why I wanted to do this, but I did it for some reason, and it got me practically nothing. So was it really worth it? No, no, no. Day 96, I began preparing the pedestal in which the Ender Dragon would sit on. It looked meh, but once the Ender Dragon is placed, I'm sure it would look amazing. I waited till around nighttime and I battled with some phantoms. I wouldn't really call it a battle because they died very quickly. Day 97 was a pretty boring one. I traded for a while and brewed some slow falling potions because I didn't want to die in the end of fall damage. Day 98, I suited up to fight the inner dragon and went on a search for the portal because to be honest, I had no idea where it was. I thought about checking the mansion first, but I was traumatized, so that was a definite no. And then I Googled it and apparently it was somehow on top of the nether fortress. And on day 99, I entered the end portal. Day 100, I grabbed the magnificent egg and placed it on top of the pedestal. And that was it. 100 days on a floating island in the middle of nowhere. If you guys enjoyed, please leave a like. And if you really enjoyed it, please subscribe. 200 days coming soon if you guys really like this one. And that's it. Goodbye, and I'll see you in another.